requires well-intentioned solutions and the use of experiences gained in the realm of diplomacy. I am pleased that by placing together the support for the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action with the invaluable support for WAVE, we may now devise a plan to resolve the problems of a shattered Middle East under the clause of brutality and savagery. With a view to fighting ignorance, dictatorship, poverty, corruption, terrorism, violence, and their social, political, cultural, economic, and security impacts, I would like to invite the whole world, and especially the countries of my region, to form a joint comprehensive plan of action to create a united front against extremism and violence. This front must create a collective and global movement to tackle regional problems in a serious manner through dialogue, prevent the slaughter of innocent people and the bombardment of civilians as well as the promotion of violence and killing of other human beings, provide for the stability in cooperation with established central governments to maintain stability. And once stability is established, build diplomacy and democratic governance in the Middle East region. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen are all examples of crises being stoked through terror, extremism, violence, bloodshed, invasion, and the indifference of the international community. They are similar examples displaying cases of displacement, homelessness, and fleeing from the horrors of war and bombardments. Their problems have persisted because the international community has failed them and because of incorrect actions of newcomers to the region and naive trans-regional actors. Consequently, the wave of destruction has gone beyond the Arab world and reached the gates of Europe and the United States and has resulted in the destruction of Good afternoon, the everybody. I'm Thomas Roberts, uh, and we are at MSNBC World Headquarters here in New York, and we've been listening to President Rouhani speak there and addressing the UN. This is the 70th session of the UN. Uh, who stated earlier today that we have to speak, to, uh, speak, uh, we're able to, willing to speak with any nation, including Iran, if that's necessary to be able to fight uh, terrorism. I Iran is uh, involved, like Russia right now, in Syria, fighting ISIS, bolstering the regime. And it was less than an hour ago where we saw Vladimir Putin wrapping up his speech before the General Assembly. Do it. Right. And in addition, we have statin drugs and. Hitler coalition of World War II, presumably that coalition could include Syria's Bashar al-Assad. And this morning, President Obama said in his speech that he is willing to work with other countries to defeat ISIS. However, the president said he does not want to see the reemergence of a pre-war Syria. The United States is prepared to work with any nation, including Russia and Iran, to resolve the conflict. But we must recognize that there cannot be, after so much bloodshed, so much carnage, a return to the pre-war status quo. Now, Putin is sending arms and soldiers to aid Bashar al-Assad's battle against the rebels and ISIS. Russia and Iran have also signed an agreement with Syria to share more intelligence about ISIS. And another focal point in today's talks with Putin, Ukraine. During his speech, President Obama also reminded the leaders and delegates about why the U.S. led sanctions against Russia for its military annexation of neighboring Crimea. We cannot stand by when the sovereignty and territorial integrity of a nation is flagrantly violated. If that happens without consequence in Ukraine, it could happen to any nation gathered here today. That's the basis of the sanctions that the United States and our partners impose on Russia. It's not a desire to return to a Cold War. All right, let's talk about what we can expect. Chuck Todd is moderator of Meet the Press and host of M. Quick breakthrough of our lives written by the imminent. Mitchell is NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent, host of MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell Reports.
cooperation, but we are neither in the strategic partnership we try to develop and to establish with Russia after the end of the uh, Cold War. And uh, what we see is a much more assertive Russia, a Russia which has been willing to use uh, force to change borders in Europe for the first time uh, since the end of the Second World War, and which is continuing uh, to destabilize eastern Ukraine, Ukraine by uh, supporting the separatists. Having said that, uh, now there are at least some encouraging signs.